Glory to God. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about the glory of God. If you want to see it, it's there. Get ready because it's going to be coming in its fullness and everyone's not going to get away from it. But now, if you want to see God's glory, it's there for you to see. If you want to have eyes to see, God will make it known to you, even you, if you want it. My text, I'm going to be using for my testimony here is Isaiah 45 says, And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. It shall be revealed. It's not a question of, is it going to be revealed? The question is, are we going to be ready? God is preparing a people for himself. God's glory isn't going to change. It's not going to change. It's going to, it's going to be made known. It's not going to change. But we are going to be changed. Yeah. See? That's what's, going to be, that's what's going to be different. Is we're going to be changed. <clears throat> 1979. There was a five-year-old little boy. Lived in an apartment in Indianapolis, Indiana. <clears throat> His mom said, uh, we just moved there. Mom said to the five-year-old boy, says, why don't you go out and make some friends with the guys out, at, the kids out at the swing set. There's some swing sets right by. Of course, that five-year-old was me. I went out there to make new friends, and I was excited to meet some new friends, five years old. I don't remember too many things five years old, but there's a few things that stick out. I come walking up to that swing set, group of kids, group of boys there, and I, I don't remember what I said. Probably said, hey, guys, here to play here. I don't know what it was, but I know they looked at me and said, hey, there's someone for little Joey to beat up on. <laughs> and I'm like... No, you don't understand. <laughs> I'm here to play with you on a swing set. Uh, all I remember is I, I just, I think that was my first uh, eye-opening to the, the, the world doesn't need any reason to hate you. It's just going to, it's going to, it doesn't need any reason to be mean to you. It doesn't. The, the world is an evil place. Five years old, I found out what it was like to get beat up for no reason. What it was like to, to get assaulted for no reason. I couldn't understand. I didn't know what was going on. I remember what happened after that. I probably went home, cried to my mom. She probably told me to go back out there and play some more. I don't know. <laughs> Stop bothering me. <laughs> but I know one thing that... I found out real quick that this world could be mean for no reason. At the same time, I remember that we, our family never went to church. I didn't know anything about God. But we had a couple books in our Bible, our, our, our Bible. we had a couple books in our house. One was a Bible. Probably my mom and dad got it given to them when they were married. I don't know why they had it, but they had it. And we had a, a book. It was a, a Bible story book. And still, I'm five years old. I remember flipping through this book, and I see a picture of, of a man standing there, sitting on a, a rock or something. And he's, he's talking to these little kids. And I remember asking my mom, who is this? And she told me, it's Jesus. I look back thinking of how ungodly my parents were. I just can't imagine 
this coming out of her mouth, but she said this. She said, this is Jesus. I said, well, what is he doing? And she said, well, he's probably answering the questions. I remember at five years old thinking, I got some questions. I remember thinking, what is my purpose for being here? At five years old. The glory of God can move in a person with, at five years old. I remember, this stuck with me until today. This stuck with me. God's glory was moving at five years old. In an ungodly family, i seen this. The glory of the Lord shall endure. The Lord shall rejoice in his works. God is doing this. He's making a people for himself. If we want God, he wants us. We're being changed now in Christ. God's glory is being made known now in his people as we're becoming more and more like Christ. Even as we are in this world, which is hateful and hating one another, even as we're in this present world, God is drawing attention to himself. God is doing this. His glory is being made known in the midst of his enemies. This is what God is doing. People can talk all day long about needed evidence, but the fact is if you seek God and you want God, even while you're in your flesh, God can make himself known to you. God's glory can do this. The glory of God can be made known to you. Psalm 145.11 says, They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power. When people see this, this is what they do. They talk about it. Amen. It's so glorious and wonderful, they talk about it. After I saw God's glory, I wanted to see more. I wanted to understand more. You know, the Ethiopian eunuch, when he was out in the middle of nowhere and he wanted to understand, what did God do? He sent someone so that he could understand. This is what God thinks about his people. If, if you want to know, God stops at nothing. He holds nothing back for those who want to know him. He holds nothing back. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and the heaven. It doesn't matter what people are doing. It doesn't matter what people are saying. God's glory alone is above all. When I came to know the Lord, I was 18 years old, and a teacher explained to me the gospel of Jesus Christ. I already, at 18 years old, I already had enough of the world. I didn't want no more of the world. That beating I took at five years old wasn't the last one I took. I had more of those, and I didn't want no more of those. I already found out the world is no good. Nobody had to tell me. I didn't have to go to church for somebody to tell me the world is no good. I already figured that out for myself. What I wanted to know is there something better. I knew there was something better. I had somebody to explain it to me. When somebody did explain it to me, I clung to it. I wanted it. I saw God's glory and I wanted it. So I had the gospel explained to me, and I wanted more. This is the way it is. When your eyes are open to God and his glory, next step is you're wanting more. That's right. Amen. If you're not going forward, it's because your eyes have been closed. Amen. That's the only reason you're not moving forward. There's no other excuse. If you're not moving forward, you need to get into a different position. For some reason, you have, you, you, have, you have become stagnant, and you need to move from whatever direction or whatever place you're at. Do whatever it takes. God is with you 
on this. If you want more of God, he's with you. And he is above all things, and he's not going to hold anything back to get you to be with him. So if this is what you want, well, brother, rejoice, because God is with you on this. So I prayed for the Lord to send me. By the way, the, the teacher that um, explained the gospel to me, it, well, there's two, actually, two of them. And one of them, the, uh, a, a young man, Sean Marooney, he ended up falling away from the Lord while, while I was with him. And it, uh, and it really hurt me bad. You know, I, someone who, I don't know who was saying this. They are saying, when you get to heaven, I mean, heaven, I did it again. When you get to hell, that's not the worst thing. The worst thing is looking back and seeing you, you took with you. It does, everything that we do, we are going to be have accounted for. We're going to be accountable to what we're doing. Because when, we when we decide not to serve God, it isn't just, we haven't just made a decision for ourselves. We have affected others. Well, it, this, this did affect me. But I saw God's glory. And I saw that it was better than anything this world ever had to offer me. So I wanted more. So I went to praying. I said, Lord, you know I can't do this on my own. You know that I need help. I needed to see more. But the Lord heard my cry. The Lord heard my cry. My whole family came to know the Lord. My brother came to know the Lord, who was, at the time was a great help to me. There's a man who didn't even know what I was praying about. But God knew what I needed. And God doesn't hold anything back when you want him. I want to talk about here, like when God, see, I'm giving my personal testimony of what happened here. I don't, I, now I'm starting to see more of what happened. I see more of what happened, but I'm just giving you my personal testimony because God did a lot. When I went to praying, I didn't know, there, might, there must have been other people praying too because there was a lot happening here. But there was a man who didn't even know I was praying and his name is Ricky Sims. <laughs> and the Lord sent him down to Florida. And Ricky, at the, at the time, he didn't know what he was. He just knew he wanted to go find a church somewhere to preach at. And he didn't know exactly what he was doing. But let me tell you something. When I went to praying, God knew what he was going to do. The angels and the heavenly hosts, I could just, with my heavenly imagination, they said, well, what are you going to do now? Well, I got somebody over here, his name is Ricky Sims. I'm not a drummer. <laughs> You're going to send him down? <laughs> God said, go get him. Ricky's figuring out what he's going to do. The angels were th saying, hey, why don't you go to Florida? Ricky's like, I got a good idea. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go to Florida. <laughs> that would be a good idea. God was glorified. Ricky went down there. It wasn't, it wasn't easy times at all, but God was glorified. See? When I came to know the Lord, and I wanted more, God, God said, all right, I'll give you more. Well, Ricky, he, he preached there, and he blessed myself and my wife and my mother-in-law and, and uh, many others. My brother-in-law now, Levi Miller, and, and, um, and his wife are also here with us up in here in Joplin. So you know what I'm saying? A rippling effect happened. I'm thinking I'm just praying for, some, for the Lord to send somebody so I can understand the gospel. Ricky was obedient to God. And more than he could imagine happened. Yeah. Well, Ricky was there for a while, and he decided he wanted to go to DeSoto. 
He left, and I, rem I remember he came before our co little congregation, kind of got weeded down after he was preaching the gospel. There were a few people that didn't like to hear that. So our, our congregation got weeded down. And he said, uh, he comes to us with the nerve to ask us to go with him. I'm telling you, at the time, I was thinking, what are you talking about? Here, I'm, I got a good job. At my job, I couldn't do nothing wrong. I was working with my dad. Me and my dad got together every single day, had lunch together. Well, he, Ricky comes, comes before us, asked, he said, well, I'm going to DeSoto. I was, I was wanting you guys to come with us. And, I, and, you know, thinking, what, are you joking? Well, he left anyway. And uh, Nikki and I were, were there, and I remember people started coming back in the church. People that didn't love God, they're coming back anyway, just because they've been going to that church forever. They started coming back. And I remember Nick, Nikki started crying, and I said, what's the matter? She said, it's like it was before. The same, like nothing changed. People just start coming back, and they don't, they don't love God. They're just, just here to be here. So I started, my wife and I started praying what the Lord wanted us to do, and it was only apparent. It was only apparent what God wants to do. Leave. People don't want to hear God. Go where you're going to, go where you're going to hear God. Listen, people leave, go all over the place to, to get a good job. People all day long, you tell them I'll give you a million bucks to go um, work in uh, Alaska, they're going to pack their bags and be up there tomorrow. Give you a million bucks a year. Well, I don't got to pray about that. That sounds like it's a word from the Lord. Let's go. <laughs> Ain't nothing to pray about. A million bucks a year. Praise God. That's a blessing. Well, we prayed about it. And we knew this is what the Lord wants to do. We wanted to grow more. We wanted more of God. And God said, God says, don't worry about it. I'll take care of you. Well, we, we moved up to DeSoto. We were praying for a house. The Lord provided a house. The Lord gave us what we needed. I, I took a pay cut. That was all right. God still provided what we needed. We needed to fix up the house. The Lord sent a tornado, tore the roof off, so we got money to fix the house up. <laughs> this is the glory of God. He'll make a way. You try to figure this stuff out. God says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise up a man to, to save Egypt. And you say, well, how are you going to do that? Well, I'm, well, we'll probably have to send him to school first, and then we're going have to have to do this and do that. And God says, no. Nope. First, I'm going to have his brother sell him into to slavery. Then I'm going to have him get thrown into prison. And then, uh, then I'm going to have him interpret a dream, and the next thing you know, he's going to be second in charge of all the world. Does this make any sense to you? It doesn't matter if it makes any sense to you. This is the way God does things. If God wants to make his glory known, and you want his glory, he'll make it known to you. If you're not moving forward, that's because you don't want God, because God wants you. You, you come to God, he'll hold nothing back. Afterward, he brought me to the gate, even the gate that looketh toward the east, and behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east, and his voice was like a noise of many waters, and the earth shined with his glory. This is the glory that we're talking about. It didn't say a little piece of the earth over here shine with glory. It didn't say a little piece over here shine with glory. It said the earth shine. This is the kind of glory we're talking about. God does what he wants to do, and if you want him, he wants you. I'm using my personal testimony here to show you no matter what your situation is, I don't know your situation. I'm telling you what happened to me, but I don't know what your situation is. 
But what I'm telling you is, God's glory is for you. I don't know where you're at. I don't know if you got to move to another country to see God's glory. But whatever you got to do, I'm telling you, this is what you got to do. Whatever you got to do for you. Because when God comes back, none of this other stuff is going to matter. It didn't matter if I stayed down in Florida so I keep on having lunches with my dad. The lunches are going to come to an end. I miss my dad. But I knew I wanted more of God's glory. I didn't care where I had to go to see it. I knew I wanted to have more understanding of God because when God comes back, I wanted to be ready. When God's glory shows up, nothing else matters. It all is going to go into the background. God takes second seat to nothing and no one. God's glory overshines everything. I know people don't know this now, but it doesn't really matter what people think or do because when God shows up, his glory shines over everything. And he is showing up, by the way. He is coming back, by the way, in his glory. And when he shows up, that's the only thing that's going to matter. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all the nations, and the desire of all the nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory. God does what he wants to do. The reason people don't see it now is because it's not fully known. But when it's fully known, nobody's going to have to say, well, who is that? Everybody's going to know this is God in his glory. And for those who are preparing now, this is going to be a glorious day. A wonderful day. An exciting day. Those who aren't, it's going to be a terrible day. Those who have chosen the things of this world over what God, those who have forsaken nothing over God, that is going to be a terrible day on that day. When he returns, he's going to return in all his glory. See, here's the thing I really want you to know. Is God wants us to be ready. It's not God's desire to show up and have anybody not ready. That's not like God. He doesn't doesn't desire that anyone perish. He desires that we be ready. So what is he doing? He's doing everything he can do to get you ready. He sent his son to die for you. He held nothing back for you. So why should we hold anything back for God? Why should we hold anything back? Whatever it takes for us to see God's glory. That's what I'm talking about. Whatever it takes. That's what, how far should we go? Let's think about how far God went. I got people I know that said, what are you doing? You're moving for what? You're going to go to, we got churches around here. What are you moving up there for? You're crazy. You're leaving your family. You're leaving a good job. What are you doing that for? What'd God do? He didn't, he, he didn't worry about the fellowship with his, his son. He sent his son down to die for us. So when we see what God has done for us, when we see, I know when, you, when people can't see, this is why they don't do. I know people are blinded, that's why. But when you see, and lo, the angel of the Lord appeared to them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for the all people. This isn't just for the Baptist, the Christian, the Catholic, the whatever. This is for all people who want 
his glory. If you want his glory, he wants you. If you want to be in his presence, well, that's why he wants to. God's glory is the main thing. Now, it's not known fully, but when God's glory is made known, God's glory will be the main thing. Nothing else will take the attention from God. Amen. So let's give it up now. Because we can't hold on to it on that day. And we know it's coming soon. Moses got a glimpse of God's glory. This wasn't all of his glory. As wonderful as it was, Moses had to come down from the mountain. Listen, brethren. When Christ returns in all his glory, there's not going to be coming down. We're going to be glorified. He's going to be glorified. God's going to receive, receive all the glory. And it's going to be a high time. And there's no more coming down. Amen. This is what we're preparing for. The fact that we're talking about this today in our flesh, in the midst of this wretched world, God is glorified. Amen. That day when he returns, all will be made known. Everything's going to be laid out. There's not going to be no mistake in who God is, what God's glory is, how glorified God is. Everything's going to be made known. The fact is, are we going to be ready? And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all the flesh shall see it together. More for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. God is coming back in his glory. And the question is, are we going to be ready? Amen. 